Should you buy iPhone 8 Plus in 2021? What is up, guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology. We're going to begin with the key specifications to give you a little bit of a refresh. 5.5 inch Full HD display, dual 12 megapixel camera, Apple A11, Bionic, 3 gigs of RAM, and guess what? A 2691 milliamp hour battery. That's all you really need to know on the specifications. Really quickly there, they're, they're kind of basic in 2021, but this phone is a 4G LTE phone. So keep in mind, if you're looking for 5G, this is probably not going to be for you. Now, first thing I want to talk about is the build, the weight. The iPhone 8 Plus here in 2021 still feels like a pretty heavy phone, uh, not super lightweight, but definitely has this premium feel. Even with the glass back and we have the aluminum rail here, there's nothing that feels cheap about it. Yes, it does have the older bezels here. But let's be frank here, this phone was the best of the 6 lineup when the 6 Plus came out. That was a huge seller. This was the overall refinement, the final refinement of that phone. It did have a few iterations, 6S Plus, 7 Plus, but then the 8 Plus was like, okay, I'm going to give you glass. I'm going to give you wireless charging. And in 2021, even though the phone doesn't look super up to date and new, it still feels very premium. Now keep in mind that the 8 Plus did come with IP67 dust and water resistance. iPhones have been updated since then to have IP68, so it's not the best at that. But I wanna move on to the display with this phone because this is an area where phones have really changed, specifically the iPhone. So this iPhone 8 Plus right here, if we zoom in, on this guy, it does have more of that traditional 16 by nine display, not that 21 by nine or 18 by nine stuff, but does it get bright enough? Yes, it does. It gets to 625 nits. So that actually matches the brightness on the 12 mini, the iPhone 12, as well as the iPhone 11, 10 R, as well as, you know, even the iPhone 10 S and 10 S max. So this phone definitely gets plenty bright here. It does have true tone, night shift and dark mode. And I really never had an issue. Actually, this is one of my favorite displays on an iPhone because it was full HD 1080. In addition to that, it got plenty bright and they tweaked the color to make it just a little bit more accurate, a little bit more balanced than when they had it on the iPhone 6S Plus, although it's kind of hard to see. What I really like about it though, is when you are reading articles and stuff like that, there's a lot of width to this display. It's not really tall and long. It's very wide. So it reminds you a lot of your monitor or even your you know, tablet, your iPad, stuff like that. It just feels like this very wide display, which is enjoyable when consuming media and content. In addition, this one does have the ability to go into landscape mode, something I miss greatly on the iPhone 12 Pro Max, the 11 Pro Max, because it gives you something to just kind of feel like a little mini tablet if you're not someone who has an iPad or doesn't even want an iPad, at least you can have something similar to it. Now you can't do iPad OS type things like split screen, but still having a landscape mode is very nice when you're just laying in bed and you wanna read stuff, things like that. So in 2021, this is still kind of a unique thing to the iPhone 8 Plus, even though this one is not officially for sale at Apple no more. So definitely do enjoy the overall display. Now its density comes in at 401 PPI. So when you do get close, what do I mean by this? Well, the text is plenty sharp. It's actually sharper than that of something like the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 10 R that only come in around 326 PPI. Although many people say I don't give a crap about that. It's still for full HD is still a nice thing to have on the phone, whether you give a crap about it or not. Haptic press, when you press in, it's a little bit faster than it is on the newer phone. So that's nice. And it has a little bit more of a more refined vibration feel to it. Just when you press it down, it just feels super refined because that was, there was actually 3D touch built right in, in this phone, whereas Apple kind of just went to a haptic press in the newer ones, most likely to save money because people probably didn't care about this too much. But still, it's a nice thing to have to know that your 3D touch is faster than the newer iPhone to pop those things open. So there are some pros still to this phone, even though it's an older device. Okay, guys, so talking about the software. Now, I'm actually doing the software update to 14.4. Right now, it's preparing that update. I recommend you do this software update if you haven't already. But we're looking at iOS 14. This is bringing app library to the phone. Also, the ability to add more widgets. You, didn't, you actually can add widgets that are like actual widgets here in iOS 14, and you do have stacks and many other features here, and some nice privacy stuff. You can also go between these. We talked about this in 14 many times already. But 14, the fact that you're running the latest and greatest software on a 2017 iPhone, that's pretty amazing. If you ask me, you're four years in already and you're still on the latest stuff. And I don't think this is gonna be a phone that's gonna lose support when iOS 15 comes. So 
you should be fine there as well. So definitely, if you're going to buy this and you're like, you know, I found one of those cheap, it looks nice and you know, it's still getting software. Yes, it, it's definitely still getting software. So really refined, really like this. And that brings me on to the performance because this Apple A11 Bionic still flies through the day-to-day -day tasks. Now, does it beat out newer phones? No, but I honestly could use the A plus every single day this year and I probably wouldn't be clamoring for more performance or just after more performance. I just wouldn't feel that way because the 8 Plus has a very snappy A11 Bionic chipset. Now, this isn't the fastest in the world, but it is clocked at 2.39 gigahertz. And, you know, Apple, they make their own processor for their own phone. So A Plus says I'm a quick boy still here in 2021. You do have three gigs of RAM, which is very similar to what Apple puts in some other, other phones like the iPhone XR. So, and that phone is still a great choice in 2021, as I mentioned in my Should You Buy XR in 2021 video a couple weeks back. But yeah, this A11 Bionic, if you're looking for this phone, if it's in your price range and this is what you want, this is what you can buy, I think you're going to like it. This reminds me a lot of the SE 2020, but in a bigger package. But the SE 2020 does have the faster chip if you want that. But overall, really do think the performance is okay. It's just fine here in 2021. You can run most of what iOS has to offer with no problems. Okay, guys, so you can get this thing in like a 64 gig, 256 gig model. So there's plenty enough storage on here. But talking about the rear cameras, this is that dual iteration from the 7 Plus, but this is a iterative update over that. It made the camera a little bit better in terms of overall photo quality, but was the big deal here was 4K 60 capabilities for the iPhone 8 Plus. You were able to shoot video at a new level versus what you could do on the 7 Plus. And let me tell you, the video is still very exceptional in 2021. If you shot a video on this with decent lighting and natural lighting even, or if you have your own lighting, nobody's going to say your video looks bad. Seriously, they're not. That's how good the cameras on iPhones have been for a while. And this one's no different. Is it going to give you the ultra wide? No. Is it going to beat out the new iPhones? Does it have all that extra jazz? No, it doesn't. But guess what? No one's really going to care but the person using the phone. And I think if you're using this phone in 2021 and you got it on a crazy good deal, the camera will do just fine for at least the time being until you can upgrade to something newer. So definitely I'm fine with the camera in 2021 on the iPhone 8 Plus. All right, so let me show you a few examples of what the 8 Plus can achieve. Now, are you going to tell me that's a bad looking photo? Like, let's be real. Look at this bike. Does that look bad, really? Or what about this? The scarecrow. Does this really look bad to you? I mean, even now, this is incredible decent for what you're going to pay for this phone. You're going to find this really low right now and you're going to get photos like that. So definitely not a bad camera here. Yeah, please be a good neighbor and clean up after your dog. But you can see just look at the detail. Do we really do we really see this camera being a bad camera? No, it's definitely not. Now you'll see right here. You see how it blew out the highlights over there, like the exposure over here. You'll see definitely in the newer phones, they clean that stuff up. So you might get that sometimes, but it's not going to be a deal breaker. Now over here, you'll see, look at this palm tree looking super detailed, even on an iPhone 8 Plus. So this goes to show you, you're not going to get bad quality for this phone. It's not going to beat the newer ones, but it's not bad. Now, if you are going to make a sacrifice, it's going to be on the selfie camera. This is where the iPhone 8 Plus doesn't really shine. It doesn't have the ability to back out wide, so you might have to hold this out a little bit further than some of the newer iPhones. And it doesn't match up too well with the rear camera because Apple put a 7 megapixel versus matching the rear camera like on the newer iPhones with 12 megapixels. But it's not really any different from the SE 2020 or any different from something like the iPhone XR. So this is a decent front-facing camera. It can only do 1080p at 30 FPS, but it's not the best selfie camera. So you will sacrifice there. But where you're not going to sacrifice is on the sound quality because you do have stereo speakers, both top and bottom of this phone. And I've been really listening closely, and it's really hard for me to hear a difference between any year. It seems like Apple keeps putting similar stereo speakers on their phones, although I will say that they are doing a little bit more crispy highs when you talk about the newer 12 Pro Max, but still, I mean, this is decent for stereo sound. And then communications. We do have Wi-Fi up to AC Wi-Fi in here, not Wi-Fi 6 on board, so it's not the fastest Wi-Fi in the world, but are you gonna notice this? Probably not. 
This also has 4G LTE, so you won't be getting 5G. Again, we mentioned that in the beginning of the video, and this phone does have Bluetooth 5.0. There are newer standards coming out, but again, that's still a very fast, acceptable performance. And the phone quality wasn't the best in the world on this phone. If you're not in an urban area, if you're in a suburban area, you probably don't have the best service that you're going to get depending on your carrier this could change though if you have one of the better carriers in the area it should be fine this just doesn't have a qualcomm in it so definitely not the fastest or, or best reception now i will talk a little bit about touch id super convenient in 2021 right now super easy to use day to day you don't even have to think twice about it you press that button and you're in your phone and man was the battery a champ for the iphone 8 plus this thing still easily makes it through the day, no problem. Now, keep in mind, if you find this thing secondhand, check that battery capacity. You don't wanna get anything lower than like 93. I wouldn't buy anything lower than like 93 because around 80, that's when I usually start seeing terrible battery life on these iPhones. Again, 2691, so it's a big enough battery, but this thing does fast charge as well, so keep that in mind. And lastly, you can get this thing in gold, space gray, as well as silver if you don't like this red, product red color. And I'm seeing them around 269 to 300 bucks right now, so for that price, I think you're getting a whole lot of iPhone, especially if you find this cheaper than the SE. This is a whole lot of iPhone right here, and if you're just not trying to pay big bucks for the iPhone, this one's still decent. It'll last you a couple years, I think. Let me know your thoughts on the iPhone 8 Plus in 2021. Are you picking one up? You said, heck no, Nick. I got the 10R. I got the 11. I got the 12. I just like watching these videos. But definitely thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. Be sure to be well. Be sure to be well. And peace.